Well, it's one of the most important stories out there, a growing confrontation between the government and the Supreme Court over how judges are appointed. Over the last few weeks, we have seen comments from the law minister and the vice president as the Rajya Sabha chair taking direct aim at the collegium system of appointing judges and even what the role of the top court should be. At the heart of the row is how the Supreme Court struck down a law passed by Parliament in 2016 called the NJAC, which would have given the government a greater say in judicial appointments. The vice president, in fact, went as far as to say that the Supreme Court had disregarded the sovereignty of Parliament, while the law minister hit out at charges that the government sits on files to clear appointments and even criticize the courts for taking long vacations. Well, we've also heard rebuttals from the Chief Justice of India, who in fact has decided they're not going to be vacation benches uh, constituted during the Supreme Court's winter break. Uh, is that a result of these barbs by the law minister? Well, joining us now on the program to talk about the bigger ramifications of this confrontation is India's former law minister and member of parliament, Mr. Kapil Sibyl. Uh, Mr. Sibyl, thanks very much for being with us. What do you make uh, of these uh, sudden flurry of comments about judicial appointments, about the judiciary itself, which are coming from the government? Why do you think this is happening now? Why well, I can't possibly enter the minds of the government and speculate for you as to why this is happening. But uh, the trend is quite clear. They want not just a larger say in the appointment of judges to the Supreme Court. They want the final word. And they want to be the arbiter uh, of who is going to come to the Supreme Court and who, who will. Who, who, and, and all those who don't like, uh, they want to make sure that they don't come and join the bench. But the language that's been used, uh, you know, by the law minister in particular, it has irked the Supreme Court more than uh, once in the last few weeks. Uh, what do you make of some of the strong words that he has said, even issuing a warning to the uh, Supreme Court at one point, saying that we are not going to sit silent forever? Well, they, they have not been silent on many other things. Why would they sit silent on this issue? Uh, you see, this is the last citadel of freedom that they have yet to capture. They've captured all other institutions uh, from the... Pardon my saying, so from the election commission to the post of governors, to the vice chancellors of universities, to their own people in the ED, in the CBI, uh, in the NIA. Uh, so they've got, they've, and of course the media. I mean, I think that there are only very few um, uh, channels are left uh, who, who have an independent voice uh, to raise. Um, so they, 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 they just, with the brute majority they have, they think that they can, they can capture all institutions and do what they want. And this is just, this sort of sparring is the result of that. And I'm afraid uh, what's been, what's been uh, placed before the public by the law minister, unfortunately, doesn't represent the facts. Um, the fact is, and the law minister is not a practicing advocate, he should know that a judge sits at 10.30 in the morning, sits on that chair till 1, sometimes 1.30. Then he comes back to court at 2 o'clock, uh, sits till 4 o'clock, so five and a half hours on one chair. Not an easy job. No politician does it. Then he goes back home. Uh, then he has to correct orders. Then he has to uh, read the files for the next day. That will take another four or five hours. Each court has about 60, 70 matters every day. He has to concentrate on all that. And then after that, he has to write judgment. So actually 10, 12 hours sitting in that position, uh, you know, for somebody to say that they don't work or they don't need vacations, I'm sorry. In fact, the weekends are spent uh, drafting judgments. Vacations are spent for the spillovers that, uh, of the judgments that have not yet been drafted. I mean, it's a seven-day job and a 365-day year. What, what did you What did you make of the law minister's comments that the Supreme Court shouldn't be taking up, for example, uh, public interest litigations or even bail pleas? Uh, the, the Chief Justice did respond to that, saying that this is this is their job as a constitutional court. But what did you make of those comments? Well, two things that I was a little surprised by. I mean, I was just figuring out how much Parliament has worked in the last one year, from January to December, and Parliament has worked for 57 days in that one year, okay? And uh, court works for 260 days in a year. So does the court tell parliament, why aren't you working enough? And uh, for PILs and the, and, the, and the comment on PILs, I just want to tell you that most, a lot of the PILs are actually filed by those who are um, somewhat aligned to the government and their policies and their ideology. 
and the law officers stand up on the other side and say, no, no, this is a very important matter. The court should take note of it. I've seen it day in and day out. And the other PILs are for genuine public interest. And where the court finds that the PIL is motivated, the court rejects it. And that's the job of the court. You know, PIL is an institutionalized practice uh, ever since Justice Bhagwati's days. Uh, has resulted in a lot of very uh, uh, judgments which uh, which have changed the polity of this country. Right. So I, 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 I see for the law minister to say this, uh, I, I, I can't possibly uh, look into the motive, but surely um, he's not quite aware of what's happening in court. But let me ask you, the collegium system, I think many would agree, including former Supreme Court judges, is, is far from perfect. In fact, there is a call for greater transparency. Wouldn't you agree? And what do you think, well, therefore, is the best way forward in terms of making that uh, process of appointing judges more transparent without giving the government a say in it? Well, the problem is we have a Hobson's choice here. The point is that the collegium system is not a perfect system. It has many imperfections. But to give that power to the government is, would be disaster. Uh, and we've seen the government uh, holding on to files. Uh, judges who have, in the high courts, who have rendered judgment against them suddenly get transferred somewhere else. And their elevation is stopped. They're not given the appropriate high courts in accordance with their capabilities and seniority. Um, so if the, gov if the government chooses not to elevate a judge or appoint a person to the Supreme Court or the high court, the government just holds on to the file. So, I mean, I would rather have an imperfect collegium system than a disastrous uh, system in which the government is the final arbiter of point. But it's also Supreme a fact, Court. Mr. Sibyl, that when the NJAC bill was passed in Parliament back in 2015, you had the opposition supporting it as well. Uh, uh, would it be different if they tried to bring a new version of it today? Do you think that the opposition would still back it? Well, you must understand that since 2014, the nature of this republic has changed. 2014 to 2022, India is not the, not the India it was in, before 2014. So I'm, I'm, I'm afraid the opposition will have to change its position. I hope they do. I certainly be the one to persuade them to do so. So finally, Mr. Sibyl, what, what do you, you know, foresee as a result of this confrontation, which you know, isn't ending anytime soon? What are the implications uh, you know, for a democracy like India when you see the executive and the judiciary at loggerheads like this? Well, quite frankly, um, uh, Nidhi, um, uh, we should be more concerned about the implications of what the government is doing in other areas. Uh, this is the least uh, problematic because I think the, the judges of the Supreme Court have broad enough shoulders to hold on to the constitutional positions that they have uh, articulated and enunciated. I don't think it'll be easy for the government to ride rough shot over, over, the, over the way the Supreme Court is functioning. I, should, I think we should be worried much more about what other things are happening in the polity of this country. Uh, we will stand firm. I think the bar will stand firm. The court will stand firm. Let the law minister say what he likes. All right. Kapil Sibyl, former law minister and, of course, senior lawyer yourself. Thank you very much for joining us on that big story.